there a drug council? Oh, a drug council is a myth. It's, I mean, it's the first time I heard of council was when I was in court in 1983. And he's putting people behind bars, helping to make cases for the feds. There is no justice in, in terms of that. Eight years ago, Nick was uh, the scum of earth in terms of court, being in the courtroom in yeah. Judge Worker's court. And then three years ago, he became Robin Hood because he was telling <laughs> Everybody looked at the Italian era. Everybody looked at the Bumpy John, looked at that era and thought that was the era. People had, had began to take on a sense of pride that they might as well wear three pieces of the Brook Brothers suit and some gator shoes and come out because it was real now. These kids today, you know, they might see 100,000 in a year. Back then, they were seeing 400,000 in an hour. Back then, we shared the wealth. You, you, you had never seen this kind of money coming in the heart. We're talking about fifty, sixty thousand dollars a day in one block, and we're talking in a small block. Fifty, sixty thousand easy, hundred thousand dollars made in one block. They were driving Rolls Royces, changing cars like people were changing shoes. They were going on trips. They were going to Switzerland, Italy. After a basketball game, they just say, "Yo, man, everybody get in the car, man. You know what I'm saying? Everybody get in the cars, man. Get as many as you can in each car, man. We going to Puerto Rico, man, and just drive right out." Just drive, just get in the car, and just drive out to the airport, and there's planes waiting. Each individual's interest was the interest of everyone else. When a guy said, man, one day I would love to drive a Mercedes Benz, and got in contact with Nick, in two weeks it could happen. Just a simple Nick saying, yo, take that. But in 1977, Barnes, who had been arrested 13 times on various charges but never convicted, was indicted once again. The dynasty had switched, and the move was made. God was the man. People give you props out of fear. People give you props out of respect. He got his out of respect. He went from selling jeans out of a van in 18 Park, man, to listen on top of the world. The guy bought the Apollo Theater. He saw his dream come true, where he took over the Apollo Theater, fixed it up, and he wanted to open it with me, and we opened it, and, and here was the success. How many niggas buy the Apollo Theater, man? Let's be for real, man. I mean, we talk about a, a monument. We talk about a landmark. We talk about, man, the Apollo Theater, man. We talk about... My mama was going to the Apollo Theater when it was 75 cents, man. My mama's 65, feel what I'm saying to you? The Apollo was the biggest thing for Afro-American people that was going on. These niggas is getting illegitimate. These niggas ain't getting no legitimate money. They're getting drug money, man. These niggas buying the Apollo. That was like buying the fucking Empire, Empire State Building, you hear me? People came from everywhere, not just for the night, the entertainment. Uh, uh, Stevie Wonder, not just the fact that Teddy P was gonna be there, no, not not just because of that, but the fact is they might happen to get a chance to get a picture with this kid named Guy Fisher. People like John Belushi, Paul Simon, and I mean, you had limousines from 8th Avenue to 7th Avenue. Niggas had minks, chinchillas, all types of furs, all types of girls was coming out there. Cars was triple parked. Well, 125 Street hadn't seen that in a long time. I think Guy, biggest mistake was buying the Apollo. I mean, personally. Everything was fine with the Apollo Theater until NBC, a national broadcasting company, wanted to televise amateur night again from the Apollo Theater on a Saturday night. And they gave them this big contract, whatever it was in terms of money and for how many amount of years. And you know, when corporations start getting into doing that, they, they look a little deeper at what's involved, who's involved. And somebody picked up the name Guy Fisher and said, well, this, this is the same guy that's supposed to be hooked up with Nicky Barnes and this whole drug thing. And I think from that point on, people got suspicious. The black man wants to go to Africa, the white man's going to the moon. I'm going to stay in Harlem with the Puerto Ricans and have me some fun. <laughs> Seriously, Red Dub. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>